from 30 minutes past 6 p.m. You're watching the Wednesday edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. Thanks for trusting My Media Prime for Prime News. My name is Genda Pelton Blanche King. We're live from uh, Cameroon's uh, economic capital, Douala, from uh, Studio A of uh, My Media Prime. Uh, we now uh, visit uh, Nyala neighborhood in uh, Douala where a fire incident has uh, reduced a shop to ashes. The fire incident occurred earlier this morning. No uh, human loss or recorded but uh, serious or huge material damages have been to the like Gela tells us in the following report early this morning at about 4 a.m inhabitants of Niala Parizo in Douala witnessed a fire incident which reduced a shop to ashes the people from that locality trying to see what they can do in an attempt to put out the flames the individuals had to break the walls and resort to local means while waiting on firefighters to come when the firefighters arrived the scene, they started all necessary steps to extinguish the flames with assistance from those on ground the fire successfully put out. After they had seized the flames, inhabitants from that locality entered the shop to take record of damages and what was left. The only thing they could retrieve were bottles of whiskey, wine, beer and rice which they took to their homes. The owner of the shop arrived the scene shocked and burst in tears while people tried to calm her. <laughs> Security forces arrived the scene and investigations are ongoing to find out the real cause of the fire incident. Minat boss uh, Paul Atanganji has restricted the sales and possession of matches, axe and iron rods in the restive northwest and southwest region. According to a communique signed uh, yesterday, August 18, 2020, individuals will only buy or be sold to after authorization from competent authorities in these uh, two restive regions of uh, the country. This is in line with measures to ensure serenity in these regions as uh, some individuals use uh, these tools to commit illegal uh, crimes. Uh, details in the following report with a student journalist on internship uh, Nai Vona. Territorial Administration Boss Paul Atanganji, in a press release issued Tuesday, 18 August 2020, has restricted the sale, possession, and use of iron rods in the restive northwest and southwest regions of the country, left by authorization. This release is coming on the heels of another, issued by the Minister of Communication, Rene Emmanuel Sadi, condemning the barbaric acts of violence perpetrated by separatist rebels on the local population in the war ravaged regions. Minister Paul in this release has instructed the governors of the said regions to censor the number of marches, irons, axes, just to number these, found in shops in their respective areas so that none will be purchased without valid reasons. According to the release, before purchasing iron rod or matches in the English-speaking regions for building or clearing, the buyer is entitled to a legal building project, owner of a farm, or give concrete reasons for the purchase, after which will be granted an authorization by the divisional officer. The minister has instructed the governors of these regions to ensure the effective implementation of this release in their respective regions of command. Women from the uh, southwest region have condoned uh, the targeting and killing of uh, women in the restive regions. Uh, they were on the streets of Boya yesterday in a peaceful demonstration citing the recent cases of treasure in the northwest region and comfort in uh, the southwest region of the country. The women have been enjoyed by the governor of the southwest region, Bernard Okalia Belaya, to collaborate with administration against perpetrators of this act. Clarice Ekoe with details in the following report. You feel we sister, you feel we daughter, what I don't finish for our eyes. You feel we master. Demonstrating sorrow and pain, these are some few courageous women from the southwest region 
who have come out this day to decry the targeting and killing of women as the socio-political crisis strikes on, with the most recent case being that of Comfort Tamasang, who was brutally murdered by armed separatists. Don't tire. You will see my picking. You kill me. Then you see picking. Be often. How you feel? Who born you will kill that mommy? Where is mommy? So we the bang us and everything is stop. We don't cry plenty. That you always cry so every day with the cry. With banners bearing different messages, these women march up to the southwest governor's office. Here, they were granted audience by the southwest governor Bernard Okalabilai. We are being picked up. We are being raped. And we are being slain. We are aware of all the efforts you are putting in to make sure that we live in perfect security and peace. But His Excellency, we want to say, pray that we are still not safe. The brave ones who came out this morning, His Excellency, you would imagine already the threats. After listening to the women, the Southwest Governor Bernard Okala applauded them for bringing their grievances to the administration. Governor Bernard also enjoined them to keep collaborating with the Defense and Security Forces and to denounce such barbaric acts without fear until the culprits are brought to book. I want to congratulate you for coming out today, send away the fear to tell the ghost mother of humanity. And I want you to go back to your videos to tell the other women to go out, call their sister, to tell their children to stop it. If not, you will continue to cry. The forces of law and order, the administration are doing what they can do, but they will not be in your various homes to denounce that this one is doing this. The women are hoping that the violence against women will stop. Away from the southwest region of the country, we move over to the northwest region where the 7th Steering Committee meeting of the Northwest Grassfield Integrated Project took place recently in Bamenda. The board chair, Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique, in his closing remark, called on all to re not uh, relent efforts in ensuring a calm and uh, peaceful uh, Bamenda, applauding the efforts of uh, the uh, committee. So far, our reporter, Juliet C., with details. The seventh steering committee meeting of the Grass Fee Participatory and Integrated Rural Development Project for the Northwest Region took place at the Midino Regional Office in Bamendi. Chaired by the Governor of the Northwest Region, the steering committee meeting focus was geared at improving the living conditions of the beneficiary populations, thereby evaluating audit reports of 2019 project account, validate midterm reports of project, and also review the progress reports of project realizations at, at 30th June 2019. 2020. During the meeting, the following observations and resolutions were reached at to approve the state of realizations of the seat steering committee meeting, approve the audit report for 2019, and also the approval of the mid-term review report. The board chair applauded the committee members for job well done, despite the social, political, and health challenges rocking the region. The seventh session of the steering committee meeting of the Grass Fee Integrated Rural Development Project for the Northwest Region ended with committee adopting recommendations such as the project should plant the appraiser mission of the rice value chain development project the project should also provide updated manual of the local development fund to the steering committee for approval out of uh, the uh, country, President Ibrahim Keita of Mali has resigned alongside Prime Minister Bobo Sisse, the bow to pressure following uh, recent protests in uh, the uh, country. Nora Kakebi compiled the following. Mali's president and prime minister were seized by Mutino soldiers yesterday, August 18, 2020, plunging the country into deeper political turmoil. Mali's president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, said he was resigning and dissolving parliament hours after soldiers arrested him and some top government officials. After his arrest, President Keita said he wants no blood to be spilled to keep him in power. The arrest is simply worsening a national crisis in a country already grappling with a jihadist insurgency and mass protests. It was not clear who led the revolt and who would govern in Keita's absence or what the mutinies wanted. It is important to note that some international bodies have reacted and condemned the act strongly. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, 
has decided to suspend Mali from decision-making bodies and suspended all financial flows between its members and Mali. Meanwhile, the French Foreign Ministry condemns the mutiny in the strongest terms. UN Chief Antonio Guterres, on his part, demanded the immediate and unconditional release of Mali's president and members of his government. In addition, the European Union has equally condemned the attempted coup in Mali and rejects all unconstitutional change. They added that this can in no way be a response to the deep socio-political crisis that has hit Mali for several months. The United Nations Security Council is planning emergency discussions about Mali today, August 19, 2020. Gladys Bomotongi now takes us through news-making events around the world in the French language. Joe Biden a été officiellement désigné hier par un vote des délégués du Parti démocrate aux États-Unis à participer à la présidentielle de novembre prochain en tant que leur candidat face à Donald Trump. Décision très évidente, tout comme le cadre dans lequel cela s'est fait, soit une convention virtuelle due à la pandémie. L'Allemagne en panique d'une attaque islamique ou d'une conséquence à un trouble psychologique par un Irakien âgé de 30 ans. Ce dernier serait responsable d'une série d'accidents sur une autoroute à Berlin mardi soir, causant ainsi six blessés, donc trois graves et des dégâts automobiles. La Biélorussie en crise depuis dix jours. L'opposition manifeste contre la réélection du président Loukachenko qui lui déclare avoir remporté 80% des voix au scrutin. Plusieurs représentants des pays européens ce mercredi 19 août 2020 à savoir Emmanuel Macron, Madame Merkel et le président du Conseil européen ont appelé Vladimir Poutine, président russe, afin que celui-ci allié à Alexandre Loukachenko lui fasse comprendre que la priorité est à la limitation des violences. Thanks Gladys Bomotongina for compiling the report and ending today's edition of Prime News on my media prime. The news was produced by Ewane Elai Nolinga, coordinated by Elasha Kinsley. My name is Genda Pelju Blanchkin. Thank you for being a part of today's edition of Prime News. Join us tomorrow, God willing, at 6.30 for another edition of Prime News. Until we meet again, we're urging you, stay tuned to my media prime at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Kim Leonard and his panelists will be here to talk about news-making events in and out of Cameroon. You don't want to miss, so stay tuned.